Welcome to General Structures 2 and Lateral Forces, lesson number four, example number six. And it says that a two story braced frame is subject to seismic loads and dead loads as shown on the following page. What is the overturning moment at the base? So, what is the overturning moment? Which some people will call OTM. So, what is the OTM? The overturning moment. And then at the base, for how much uplift should the, each column be designed? So how much uplift do we need to design each column? All right. So what I would do first, being me, is I'd say, okay, what is the overturning moment? And there's a few different ways you could look at this. The first thing I would do is I'd say, I would look at this as a free body diagram, and I would put a reaction right here and a reaction right there and assuming what I would assume I would assume hey 20 kips 20 kips let's assume this is 20 kips 20 kips since it's since it's symmetrical and then I would also take a look and say okay well if I at what point can I sum the moments and, and kind of that's what you, how you get the overturning moment is you sum the moments about a point so let's call this point A and if you think about it this will cancel, cancel out with that you can go ahead and put it on there but I won't so you would say the sum of the moments so let's just say the moment equals instead of doing the sum of the moments we're just going to do the moments times the distance so 10 kips times 10 foot and then we have 20 kips times 20 foot which is what we're going to be what 400 500 equals 500 foot kips and that is your overturning moment and of course and realistically you could go ahead and put in the 20 kips dead load and 20 kips reaction, and, but they go in opposite direction. They would cancel each other out. See, if this one, if we said this is a positive moment, then these are going to create positive moments, and this will create a positive moment. This will create a negative moment, and their same reaction is the same as this load, and then it's the same distance perpendicular. So they will end up canceling each other out. And then these two loads, this 20 kip load and that 20 kip load are concentric with this with this point, so therefore they're not going to induce any moment. It's 20 kips times 0 feet and 20 kips times 0 feet. will not get you a lot, whole lot of zeros. Alright, so that was your overturning moment is what? 500 foot kips. Now, what is your uplift that you have to design for? And to do this, you need to... I'm just trying to think of a, a good way to explain it. You need to take this moment and turn it into reaction. And I think that's the, probably the best way I can think of it. Let me show you how I would do it. So if these were pushing, at what point can you sum a moment and say that's the worst and resist it with a reaction? And I would put some it about this. Let's call it point B. If you think about it, if you, if you if you hold it right here, let's say you hold this, make it a pin, and you let these go, what's going to happen? Is it the whole entire structure? Let's say you this is a free this is free to rotate. The whole entire structure will go that way. I hope you can see that. There's nothing I can animate to make that any more obvious. Now let's say if you put it at A, and you did that, what's going to happen? It's just going to create extra load. So it's going to increase this load quite the bit. And that's actually another point is you you will have to design this footing or this this support or this stuff to to um it's not going just going to be 20 kips, it's going to be 20 kips plus whatever is induced by this wind load. It's going to come down and go into that that reaction. But we're not doing that. We're looking at uplift. That would be increasing more reaction we want to look at negative reaction to a point where hey it's going to pick this darn thing up and the building's going to fall over so we have that 500 foot kips what do we need here or what's that 
What was the question? Let's see what it, what it actually asks before I just go off trying to solve this. It says, for how much uplift should each column be designed? So we know equal opposite. Right now we have 20 kips down right here. If we didn't have these, it would be 20 kips down coming down from the structure, therefore we need a reaction of 20 kips up. So let's see what that is. We have to get that we need to say, okay, 500, we have a 500 foot total, we have a 500 f uh, foot kip load going that way. We resist it by somehow doing a reaction, which is right here, at 20 foot. So let's just divide this by 20 foot and we should get whatever reaction we need is being uplifted by that 500 foot kips. I hope that makes sense. So 500 foot kips, let's say, yeah, I'll say uplift equals your 500 foot kips divided by your moment arm, which is 20 foot. So 500 divided by 20 equals 25 kips. So this, your uplift is 25 kips. It's actually actually going 25 kips up. And I know I've been saying up and down. Oh, the reaction is up. So in the end, the reaction needs to be down 25 kips, while the dead load reaction needs to be up. So therefore, in total, if you think about it, actually, we have to actually, a lot of actually is there. We have to reduce this by 25%, and that is what 25% of the dead load. So let's take 25% of this, and that's it's one of those load factor type situations. Let's assume you went into, and the reason for that is you went in here, you did a lot of assumptions with your dead load. It could be off. What they're saying, 15%. You could have not put everything in. You could have done a lot of different things, and we can go into why that's 0.85 but they did a lot of studying and came up with 0.85 as a percentage they thought was useful so let's take 25 percent of that uh, so you have you know I have eight an uplift of 25 now you have a dead load weight coming down this is going up and we have a dead load going of 25 20 kips times we said you want to take 0.85 and that's just by code it should be in the UBC. Once again, I do not have a UBC with me since it's about 10 years old and I will not be able to find it. So that's 17 kips. So you have 17 kips down from your dead load. And you have 25 kips up from your uplift. So let's subtract these out. 25 minus 17. Let's do that. And you get 8 kips uplift. So you actually need to design these for eight kips of uplift. It means you have to hold that down somehow, whatever way you want to. You have to hold this down as opposed to just being have a piece of concrete here that, oh, it's sitting on it. It's going to, let's say you had to do 20 kips. You have to resist that 20 kips. So, oh, that's it's easy. Well, now you have to somehow engage this. You can't just have you know, you can't just have this beam come down, have a plate, and just have a bearing pad. So you just have a bearing pad there. And everything keeping that down is your dead load. And now you actually need to go in, and once again, this is just a, a very basic, I'm just trying to um, come up with something to make you understand or help you understand what's going on here. So in this sense, where if you didn't have uplift, yeah, this building would be sitting on it. You might have a plate right here or something. Once again, I would never do this in real life, but showing that you can't move side to side. Okay, well, it's not going to go up, so it's just going to sit on that bearing pad, bearing plate, and be fine. It'll be fine. But now, oh shoot, this, it'll actually pick up. I have eight kips of uplift. It will pick up, and the whole building will fall over. That's not a situation you want to be in. So, to resist that uplift, let's say you put in acre bolts where you have a, like a, a washer, let's say, and this anchor bolt will go into the concrete and you'll have a nut on there and you'll put some more over here, let's say. This is just one way you could potentially do it. There's a lot of different ways. And now when it tries to go up, that washer will engage, that anchor, that bolt will engage, or I mean not the bolt, but the nut will engage, and then it will, that will engage the bolt and it will 
the pull out strength will not allow it to get out and you won't be able to do it so that needs to at least be designed for eight kips of uplift all right i am pretty sure that was everything we needed let's go ahead and check that yes it says net uplift is there 425 minus 17 equals eight kips and that's exactly what we did and if we might want to go ahead and read over what they say about that and hopefully that will be helpful but as you can see, it looks like they say top-heavy buildings. If you have a tall, slender building, that means you have a lot of moment arm, correct? You have a lot going this way in moment arm, and if it's slender, that means you have little moment arm to resist. Remember, we had that 20 foot to resist. If you had 80 foot, so let's say we make the, the same height, so you have the same forces going over there. They might be larger because you have a larger dead dead load but you get what I'm saying and you had something like this you get it divided instead of by 20 foot you do get it divided by 80 foot and remember that will help out quite a bit because instead of what you had let's say you still had 500 divide by 20 is 25 500 divided by 80 is what I don't know 6.25 so as you can see it's a heck of a lot lower so uh, maybe they say something about pyramids. If you think about it, I think I, I, I did read through this ever so swiftly. And you think, if you think about it, pyramids are like the anti-overturning. Because pyramids, first of all, the real, like Egyptian pyramids, they weigh a lot. Number two you're not going to get too much wind on it so any lateral loads or horizontal loads um, and look at this huge base so anything you do have you, you relatively I mean they're not relatively tall structures according to their base but uh, I mean if you think about today's buildings they look like this they're taller and they have a heck of a lot smaller base so you have a sh the way I like to think about it is you have a shorter moment arm to resist that that, that lateral load and the pyramids have this huge moment arm to resist those lateral loads so obviously the old Egyptian engineers didn't worry about these <laughs> these lateral loads too much and as you can see they also withstand just about any natural disaster you can think of because they're all gra based on gravity. Alright, I hope that helps and I'll see you on the next video.